welcome to the Potter Vision Podcast, the podcast where every two weeks, myself, Lucas Kirkby, and another man, Tom Lawrenson, we read a chapter of the Harry Potter books, and we use them to talk about other things as well. This week, we're on episode 140, and it's chapter 5 of The Half-Blood Prince, An Excess of Phlegm. Mm. Very unnecessary chapter title, once you've read it. Uh, but Tom, I was wondering, uh, where the bloody hell are you? I am in Hogwarts. I'm in Dumbledore's chambers. Uh, I cannot see from all the woodwork. Um, yeah. He's locked me in here and he says, I'm not to come out until I'm a good boy. Oof. Where are the bloody hell are you? <laughs> I'm in Denmark. Huh? <laughs> Well, I've got a long weekend, and uh, yesterday Martina goes to me. She goes, mm, do you want to drive to Denmark? I was like, yeah, all right. So we found this Airbnb that was like 40 euros a night, and we just drove to Denmark. It was about six hours. That's cheaper than your rent. I know. We might just live here. Well, because I figured out 40 euros a night, that's only about 1,200 a month, and that includes bills and stuff. It's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. Maybe I'll move there. Yeah, you move here. Wait for us to move out first, though. No, 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 no. I'll live there for yeah. free. All right. So, yeah, so I'm spending my holiday uh, recording so the podcast funny. for you. This guy, listeners, I go to him, where are you, before we start recording? He goes, bah, 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 bah. we'll save it for the pod. And I'm like, what a tale this will be. Starts the pod. Where are you? Denmark. Anyway... <laughs> 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 but I got a good Scooby Doo noise out of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. We're right near. Well, I, I don't know what sea it is because I looked at the water on Google Maps, and it's either the Baltic Sea or the what's the other one? The North Northern Sea. I don't know, but it kind of is in between both of them. So I don't know what hey, sea it is. Are you a sugary orange drink? Because you're my fantasy. Hey, that's something, isn't it? Type of yeah. shit you like that is, that's for you, that. That's... Well, I, don't, I didn't like that. You said it and I didn't like <laughs> what it. What do you mean you didn't like that? That's the kind of shit you like. What do you mean the kind of shit I like? Puns. Like a pun, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's got to be a good one, isn't it? That's as good as all of them. It's not, it's not. Fantasy. <sighs> What's brown and sounds like a bell? Dung. That's a good one. That's a joke, not a pun. Why well, is a pun a pun? Eh? That's... What's what's brown and sticky? A stick. No, poo. Oh, poo. Sorry, <laughs> poo. <laughs> what's orange and sounds like a parrot? Fanta. No, a carrot. No. Um, uh, what's uh, red and itchy? A rash. Fanny rash. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> Yeah, I get it, yeah. You get funny, Rash. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wasn't expecting that supper. <laughs> Very good. Hey, but you've impressed me with that one. You should open that with your, your new hour that you're doing in Edinburgh. <laughs> no, thank you. Last Very I good. saw you, you left me stranded in Belfast. <laughs> yeah, I did. I don't think we've told the audience this, but it made me laugh because at the end of our show in Belfast, um, Tom began advertising his stand-up show because the following day he was doing his stand-up show. But he doesn't mention that at the beginning. He says to the audience, he goes, "Oh, and um, if anyone's around tomorrow, uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to be here." <laughs> and the audience thought he was looking for some friends. Yeah, I had to go, whoa, 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 I'm not looking for mates, whoa, doing a stand-up show, and then um, we had like 150 in, in yeah. a pot of vision, yeah, guess how many of them came, no one, not, so I did a survey, I was like, yeah. who came to pot of vision yesterday, who came because I advertised it at pot of vision, there was about four people who bought, uh, maybe two people or four, that had bought tickets to both. Yeah. But 
who already had that, but the advertisement did not work. Whatever they saw that evening made him think, no, I've had enough of that. I've had enough of that. Did you have a nice time, though, with your solo show? It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. You wouldn't even believe. Um, yeah. Actually, there was, I had about 60 in, which is good. Yeah. And uh, four of them, three, well, actually, there's four guys sat together, and three of them were angry men. Oh, no. Like that? L looking at me like that for an hour. And I was doing yeah. our hubba hubba break, and then my work in progress after the break. Yeah. So they sat the whole show looking at me. And then at the end of the break, I went like this. I went, at the end of the first bit, I went, right, so we're um, going into a break now. And if you're one of the four blokes who aren't enjoying it, you might as well just leave because you're not going to like the next half. Anyway, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> and then went to a break. <laughs> Did they come back? No, they left. <laughs> Perfect. You yeah, just get rid. Like, there's nothing wrong with people walking out who don't like it because they don't have to watch what they don't like. And you don't have to watch them watching it with a miserable face. It's horrible like, having to watch people watching you. Yeah. Because people are scared of walkouts, aren't they? But Excuse me. Can you put a carrier bag on your head, please? I don't like you watching me. <laughs> oh, I like that. Now you got a bag on your head. Isn't that what comedy sports did? If like um, someone said something a bit cheesy, they'd put a carrier bag over their head and suffocate them. Well, they wouldn't suffocate them, but if it was something rude or naughty, if someone said a swear word or... I, I, I got a brown bag for saying fart once, which I thought was a bit unjustified, because that's family-friendly, isn't it, Trumps? But yeah, you had to wear a thing on your head. Yeah, well, I don't believe that families should fart in front of each other. It's a very um, private thing. Yeah, that's true. When I was a little boy, yeah. I passed wind, and my mum went to me, she went, if you're going to do that... Go to the bathroom. I was like, okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah. You got, yeah. Just, yeah. Mm, anyway, I'm not going to talk about my family's habits, but... <laughs> I've, after I've just opened up to you, I, I, I bear you my heart and soul, and he yeah. won't tell me whether his father <laughs> passes wind. Good Lord. <laughs> I know, and I, I do appreciate you opening up, and I want you to feel like you can do that again, but I the don't only times, already. The only times I've noticed you pass wind, sometimes, once once you've done it on pod before, when you've laughed, you do it sometimes when you laugh. So I don't know whether you're constantly holding them in, and they jump out when you laugh, but I think sometimes I've seen you pass wind when you've been, got a shock as well. <laughs> <laughs> and you would get away with it had you had you not declare it to the class. The class, because both times you've gone, oh, I did a trump. <laughs> well, I feel guilty. It's not nice to do it in front of other people, is it? Mm. Hey, some trump. people say, some people say it as a compliment. Do they? Who? Uh, BFG. Show me this person. BFG. <laughs> BFG. <laughs> Does the BFG say as a compliment? Does he hate burps but love farts? I think is that his thing. I don't know. I've never read or watched the BFG. I think he hates burps but loves farts. Pervert. Yeah, that is a bit, isn't it? You either like both or you don't like both. Mm. Or if you like one, it's burps. No, I don't do any. Seal no. yourself up, everyone. Seal yourself up. Yeah, get yourself a cork. And do I need to say more? Yeah. Get it up there. Hey, so um, I've told you this story, but I thought the listeners might find it funny. Uh, I saw somebody in the airport on the way to Belfast that... Made me imagine that that's what you'd be like if you worked in an airport. <laughs> so there's a guy at the uh, baggage security and um, he's doing all his announcements. Now they've got these new machines at Heathrow that mean you don't have to take out your electronics and you don't have to take out your liquids. Very good. And so the guy was saying at the beginning, he goes, don't take anything out of your bags. Just put it all on the trays. No need to take anything out. So next thing, there's a there's an old guy, and he comes up to the tray and he takes his 
electronics out and he takes his liquids out and the guy goes put everything in your bag you don't need to take anything out of your bag oh, that's me is it that's you that and the man he was an old bloke and he goes but all the signs said that you're supposed to take your electronics out <laughs> and the guy gets angry at him and he goes you were stood in front of me when i said it you haven't listened have you and he's like really annoyed at him and i thought that's what tom would be like why is that me <laughs> hey, i had another dream about you oh well, actually day. before you continue I, there was a man i saw at the airport who i thought oh that'd be lucas if he worked at the airport oh go on here we go he um he had uh, he had his trousers round his ankles and he was scratching his bum and he had a cone on his head it had a big D on the top and he had a big yeah. string of drool running from his mouth down to his shoe and he was just laughing like <laughs> and I was something about that I was like that is Lucas to a T that is <laughs> and I take that as a compliment listeners you might think that was bullying or something but I liked it. <laughs> How was that bullying? <laughs> and I liked it. What can I say? Yeah, it's not. Is it bullying if you like it? I don't know. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? When a when a bully is funny. Have you ever been bullied by someone and they're making you laugh as they're bullying you? And you're, <laughs> you know, it's actually quite good. This. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you can't I'm be laughing. Like, I'm, I'm making just... fun of you. What are you laughing? At? Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir, it's the teacher doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've definitely had a few occasions where I think someone's at school's trying to, like, intimidate me and I've just found it quite funny. No, no. But then, you can, if you're funny back, because I remember it used to really... If, there were a couple of, like, rough kids and if they had a go at me, I'd, I'd kind of take the piss back. <laughs> and then if their mates were laughing at what I'd said about them, it, it'd be very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> He's very powerful, that Kirkby boy, isn't he? He but a big bee bum bum, dee ba lee ba lee bum bum. Oh, he's powerful the things he says. <laughs> I was in a field one day, bum ba bum bee bum bum. Oh, he's, such, he's like. He's like Thanos, the power that emits through him. Jamming it down far away, a mole, mole. Well, I see you're happy slapping, and I raise you my original song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what can I say? If you're getting bullied, get a pen and paper out, start writing. Get some lyrics going, you know. I think that's the first mention of Mole Song in years. It's been a while, hasn't it? Do you remember the Mole Song listeners? Do you still like listening about that? But do you go Hearing back? Have it? you did you download it onto your phone and have you set it as your ringtone? Bum ba lum ba lee bum bum. Quick, my so. phone. <laughs> <laughs> bum ba lum ba. Hello. <laughs> like mole speaking. Sorry, I mean uh, uh. Miranda speaking. <laughs> Very good. I, mean, I remember um, a friend of mine used to have this setting where if you rang him. You'd get always look on the bright side of life in your ear whilst it was ringing. I don't know how he made that happen. That's a bit annoying. Yeah, is that still possible to do? I don't know. There we go. Oh my god, you've annoyed me now. Have I? Life's a piece of shit when you look at it. That's comedy, is it? That's a very good Eric Idle impression, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, son. <laughs> Hello. I'm thinking laugh about. Well, um, can we get him a muscle <laughs> relaxant, please? <laughs> <laughs> they have that on hand at the uh, studios. <laughs> Someone get him a muscle relaxant, please. <laughs> Yeah, you've been up to much else this week. Hey, you don't have to be a weirdo to like Monty Python, but you have to be a weirdo to like Monty Python. <laughs> no one else is liking it. I like Monty Python. Oh. Hmm. 
What does that say about me? <laughs> we are the knights that say me! Me! That's good. Mm. That's good. This is a man who opens up a shitty pair of boxes and shows it to audiences live <laughs> on stage. That is the amount I've had DMs from people, maybe we had DMs together, of people saying, My husband that made him fall in love with the show. My husband did not like Harry Potter and I forced him to come with me, but seeing the shitty boxes won him round. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> And that's, that's the person that you're hoping to impress. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the heat! Hey! Oh! 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 <laughs> so um, I'm going to be on my own in Belfast tomorrow. Hands up, whose favourite part was the shitty boxes? One Are you man. free tomorrow? <laughs> What are you doing tomorrow? Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a bit... I, I don't mean to uh, insult the room that you're in, but it's a bit scary to me. I think it's the clocks. How many clocks can you see? Two? I can see two, yeah. I don't think a room should have more than one. They were just scary to me. What? Yo! <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not the money. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> yeah it's I'll, uh, I'll I'll I'm not being too loud am I being too loud no I'm being I'm alright uh, well it's an Airbnb but it's like a shared house so um, oh you've got a room I'm, in it <laughs> yeah I've got a room in it so I don't want to be an obnoxious guest by going, well, not me not it's, it's, not, it's like midday over there did you like that venue that you're in yeah. Maybe we'll go there next time then. Maybe. Seats 100. I was asking the guy, I was like, he was like, God, my God. I said, do you know when you talk to people? He won't listen to mm. this, but I always preface things for people because I know people jump to conclusions with me. People's biggest favourite thing to do in the world is to assume they know exactly what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. So I said to the sound tech, I said to him, I do not need this for my show now at all, but out of interest, how much would it have been? Um, could you have had a projector put in? And if not, how much would it have been to rent one? Yeah. 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 I don't think I could have said that clearer. Yeah. And he was like, well, you can't have one now. There's not enough time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was, was like, saying. I was like, yes, yes. And he goes, if I'd have known, I could have arranged one and it would have been something like 100 quid. I'm guessing, but you can't hold me to that. <laughs> I was like, okay, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, that might be an option for us next year. Yeah, because we didn't make much money, did we? Made negative money. Negative money. Yeah, a bit too costly to perform there, unfortunately. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> so maybe, maybe never go back to Belfast again. Well, yeah, sad, but oh, we enjoy true. it. Come over here. Come see it in yeah, Manchester. You're, you're here, <laughs> We've had people from Belgium travel to Dublin. This is what you got to do. Right. If you you live in you live in Ireland, come to Manchester. If you live in Belgium, go to Dublin. I live in Belfast, can I go to the Dublin one? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty, not listening. You come to Manchester. What if I live in Dublin? Yeah, Dublin, you Ireland, you go to Manchester. <laughs> yeah? Bro Bel Belgium, go to Ireland. You're not listening, yeah, you're not listening. What if I said that wasn't clear? Oh, it's, it's very confusing, the part of vision show. It's not, if you listen. <laughs> Just got to listen. <laughs> yeah, people do that any time I ask people, like, just questions, like, trying to get, you know, just querying things. Um, out of interest, 
What time do you, oh, what are your opening hours? Well, not open now. No, I know. I know. Because you've just, uh, you've just turned the close sign round. But I was wondering, what are your opening hours? You should have come early in the day if you wanted to come to this cafe. Right, we'll leave it there. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> you got shit and worms for brains. And I can't continue this anymore. I'm sorry. Good day. I watched uh, Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, last yesterday. It is not called Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Yes, it surely. is. Yes, <laughs> it is. Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. How was Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? No, I don't even people know this about me, but I really love monkey films. I love anything to do with monkeys. Yeah. Well... You love something in particular to do with monkeys because you've sent me a couple of videos <laughs> with a prominent dong in it. With what are you saying? I've said hey, there's different things floating about. I don't. I I might have been sending things in my sleep. I might be sending them consciously. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, what's Planet of the Apes? Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I love Planet of the Apes. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Um, it's a dystopian film, so it's the world is over and monkeys now rule the world. And it's brilliant. It is brilliant. Yeah, see, I only saw the first one where it was still humans, but then one ape was clever. But what, are there no humans anymore? Or are they like, having a war or something? Well, the same virus that made the monkeys smart... Yeah. ...has now, has now made the humans dumb... Boo. Oh no, like that. Doi, like, like. But then there's a few humans who still have a bit of. I think. Maybe not. Um, yeah. There is the chance that their intelligence could come back. But at the minute, I think humans have been gone that long. The apes don't even know they exist anymore. Bloody hell. Loads of great quotable things there's this king in it this king king who's the king of the king of the planet of the apes yeah and he says he like he's rallying all the monkeys together and he goes what a lovely day and then all oh, that's good and then all the uh, monkeys shout it back what a lovely day <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good have you seen the original planet of the apes Yes. Yeah. I've not seen that, but it's a cool twist, isn't it? That it's like, oh, Planet of the Apes, and then the final twist is uh, I, you figure out it's Earth. I would argue that Planet of the Apes has one of the nicest fonts going for a film title. Oh, yeah. Let me have a look at this now. Planet of the Apes logo. I know. I love a good font. It's very nice. It's very angular, isn't it? Mmm. Isn't that a lovely planet of the Apes? I hope you're looking at this now, listeners. I think of things all the time to myself. I was like, thinking to myself last night, should I get a Planet of the Apes tattoo? And I'm like, no, that's stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> you can just enjoy the font on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you like? Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, it take a bath you back. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Planet of the Apes. I might watch that. But then I've missed a few, haven't I? That must be like the third film or the fourth film. Yeah, it is the fourth one. So it's about time you went back and watched them, mister. Yeah, it is true. Andy Serkis, do you reckon he... Because um, he just always plays animals and things, doesn't he? That must be interesting. Do you think he's the first do you think person they go to? Do you think that's insulting? We got a new movie know. role for you, Andy. Have you? Yeah, I want you to play a pig. Oh. <laughs> Am I going to be me or shall I not bother <laughs> cutting me hair? <laughs> no, no. Get your green suit with dots on it. Yeah, it's we got a new, new role for you, Andy. We want you to play a rat. <laughs> We loved you so much as that horrible golem thing that we want you to play every little horrible creature in every film known to man. Do you like that? 
We loved you so much, Andy. We want you to play a handful of maggots. <laughs> How would I do that? Well, you'll figure it out, won't you? Yeah, you'll figure it out. You're clever, aren't you? You're going to be the new flubber. How about that? <laughs> Ready to be the new flubber? <laughs> well, he's been all sorts, hasn't he? I'm trying to think of what, what else he's been. Andy Circus. Do you reckon he just has his own green suit with dots on it that he brings round or what? Uh, yeah, he probably wears it like I wear jogging bottoms. Uh, yeah, I think it. so. Just put that on today. I need that from me. Yes, he's been Gollum. I'm sure he's been other creatures. He's been King Kong. He's been uh, Caesar, Planet of the Apes, I think. He's been Ian Brady. Ian Brady? Yeah. He's been Capricorn. What's that? I don't know. In Incarnate. Star sign. Star sign. He's been Caesar in Planet of the Apes. He's been Baloo in uh, Mowgli. What the fuck? He's been all sorts. Hmm. Well done, Andy Serkis. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I get typecast. I'm always the, uh, you know, the old rich person. Yeah, I get typecast. I'm always the damsel in distress. Yeah, I get typecast. I'm always the little creature. I'm always what the voice rat. <laughs> <laughs> the rat. <laughs> I wonder if he's ever played a uh, chameleon because he looks quite a bit like a chameleon. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? I think so. You've been a chameleon, Andy. Excuse me. <laughs> He's listening to this. Excuse me. I used to like pot vision, but I find this offensive. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, can we have an interview with you, Andy? Have you ever been a rat? Stop this interview now. Can we have an interview with you, Andy? Yeah, is it going to be on the main episode or double vision? Oh. Oh. <laughs> it will be on double vision. 50 people might listen. Probably not all of them. <laughs> oh. 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 Mm. How much can you pay me? 50 quid? <sighs> All right, pot of vision, but right, you. Glasses up, please. <laughs> <clears throat> oh! Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're sorry, listeners. That's uh, something only Tom and I enjoy. <laughs> Funny, I don't know if I've said it before, but we have this thing where I don't know where it came from, but it's a man going over to someone with glasses, going, Lift up your glasses, please. They eagerly lift up their glasses and open their eyes, and then he jabs them in both eyes with two fingers. <clears throat> and they go, Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. What, <laughs> what did he think was going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> We don't know, but we find it very, very funny. But he's, he's just eager expectant as well. Lift up your glasses, please. <laughs> oh, this oh, this will surely be a treat. You always uncover the eyes for a treat. <laughs> and then he's, well, he's not even that cross either. Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. <laughs> oh, what an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> hey, do you fancy a rundown or not? On the Harry Potter podcast, just please. Chapter 5 An Excess of Phlegm. An XL Bully. In... Go on. <laughs> Harry's in the bow. Yeah. Mrs. Weasley's like, hello. And he's like, hello. Then Mr. Weasley comes in and he's like, hello. Then he goes to sleep and he goes, good night. Then he wakes up, he goes, good morning. And uh, the Weasleys are like, hello. And he says, hello. And then they have breakfast. He's like, yum, yum. And then Fleur's like, bonjour. And he's like, bonjour. And uh, yeah, an excess of phlegm. Is what a it? chapter. Yeah, <laughs> about it really is. Just everyone saying hello to each other, isn't it? Hello, hello. 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 
Yeah, How are you all? I'm all right. Oh, that's right. good. Hello, Mr. Weasley. Bonjour. It is Bonjour. I, Dumbledore. Right, don't. no one speaks like that anymore. I know you're 300 years old, Dumbledore, but when someone says, who is it? Just say Dumbledore. Don't go, it is I, Dumbledore. Yeah. You're wasting your words, Dumbledore. Yeah, why doesn't he have to do this? Because uh, later on, Mr and Mrs Weasley have this, like, password security question thing. But Dumbledore doesn't have to do that. He just has to say, it is I, Dumbledore. Mm. Why doesn't he have to say what his favourite fizzing whiz is? Yeah, that's a funny thing, that little um, pass password security thing. What is your greatest ambition? Right, to find out how an airplane works, right? Look it up! <laughs> yeah. Not very ambitious, are you? And imagine you being his wife. And that's his answer. What's your greatest ambition? Well, to find out how an airplane works. Not for your kids to grow up happy and healthy. Not for me to be happy and healthy. No, no nothing to do with family or... <laughs> Friends. Just about airplanes, isn't Something it? Something so trivial that you could work out in an, af in an afternoon. Walk into the nearest village. Ask a muggle. Ask a muggle. Yeah. Even They're going to the internet. Don't want to go into a library, look it up in a book. Ask Harry. Ask Harry. Ask he Hermione. That's his your biggest great, ambition, is it? It's his greatest ambition and no one will tell him. Are you going to let me in? Yes, come in. Yeah, Molly's like, oh, I was expecting you in the morning. And Dumbledore's like, yeah, but it was easier to persuade him than we'd imagined. I would like to know what Dumbledore had planned for Horace Slughorn. Yeah. Had he not so soon agreed to come back? Did he have torture devices? Did he have, I don't know, bribes? What was it? What did he have up his sleeve? <laughs> that would have lasted till the morning. Well, didn't he have a hat full of spiders? Oh, yeah, maybe. Hat full of spiders. Bust his kneecaps, Harry. All right, sir. Yeah. All right, yeah. sir. Lift his glasses up, Harry. <laughs> yeah. oh, I didn't know you were going to do that, Pea Green Pea Green, why'd you do that to me? I'm not Pea Green oh. Pea Green, Pea Green's in Slytherin Yeah, so we should explain I don't. I think we started all this Pea Green business last time <laughs> Without any explanation Did we? That, <laughs> that Horace Lugorn's actor yeah, What's his name? Jim Broadbent was in The Borrowers as the father and the son, called P. Green, was played by Tom Felton, who is Draco Malfoy. Oh. That's all you need to know. Right, now you're on track. P. Green! Um, they've got these... Uh, what do you think our questions would be to each other, Lucas, to figure out if we were the real people? I would say to you... Uh, Tom, I've been, uh, well, actually, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you about an email I've had. This is genuine now. Um, and I'm wondering if you're interested, but somebody wants us to go do Potter Vision in Guernsey. Is it? Uh, do you know what? That would be, that was almost leads into the question I was going to ask you. I was going to say, um, if I wanted to know if it was Lucas, should we make uh, two trips to Ireland to perform Potter Vision where we make no money? <laughs> yes, yes, we should. <laughs> yeah. Guernsey. Yeah. You want to go? What? What is it? A private event? We have to sell our own tickets. Uh, I don't know about that yet. What's your initial? Uh, what's your initial feeling towards it? But have to get a ferry or a plane. Yeah, that'd be enough. The silence would, would tell me that it was him. Guernsey. What even is that? <laughs> I 
It's an island. The places. You know, the places we could go. He never wants to hit the big cities. Glasgow, Edinburgh, Newcastle. He's not bothered. He goes Guernsey. He, get, get he says, get me to Guernsey. He says, get me to the Isle of Man. <laughs> He goes, I heard there's a <laughs> I heard this little coastal island. This little island off the coast of um I don't know, Wales. Do you want to go there? Well we have done Anglesey before. <laughs> mm. Hey. Part of us in Madagascar coming soon. People DMing us. When are you coming to Scotland? When are you coming to Newcastle? This guy <laughs> brother. All I need is three nights away with you in Guernsey. What are you trying to do to me? I'm going to say maybe. All right, that's a maybe. Good. <laughs> now, Tonks is there. Have you ever had anyone greet you with Watcher? Watcher? Yeah. I don't mm. know if it's, a, if it's an old... Well, she says Watcher, and she says it a few times. And I don't know if it's slang or something. Yeah, it's a friendly or humorous greeting. Well, she better watch what she says to me. <laughs> well, that sounds like a threat. It's Cockney for <laughs> what cheer. <laughs> if it's Cockney, then why is he giving her a northern accent? <laughs> watch her, Harry. Watch who? It's Tongues, hello. It's Tongues here. Mm. Nice to see you. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that Harry seems a lot more at ease at the borough nowadays with Mrs. Weasley. Maybe this role of like mother, son, stepmom, stepson thing. Mm. It's kind of eased into it. But he seems more at ease with himself as a person as well. He seems like more natural. Ron bursts in the room and he's like, how, oh, yeah. were, how were the muggles? What was it like with the muggles? Yeah. Right, listen, listen, pal, we don't. You're saying that with a bit of stank. Yeah, you are, actually, yeah. Say the Weasleys. If we're calling Voldemort, Voldemort, call them the Weasleys, not the Weasleys, the Dursleys. The Dursleys. Call, them, call them the Dursleys. Yeah. yeah, they're not they who must not be named, are they? And, and also, there's millions, of, there's billions of muggles. Do you mean it? all muggles? How are the muggles? Uh, yeah, there's an Australian who's having a whale of a time. Yeah. Well, exactly, because, like, they're fighting against the Dark Lord who's prejudiced against mudbloods and stuff. But then they have a weird attitude towards muggles, so it's not that much of a difference, really, is it? Mm. Mm. Arthur Weasley's been promoted, did you know? Yeah, I read that as well. He's the head of office for the detection and confiscation of counterfeit defensive spells and project protective <sighs> objects. That's going to be a hell of a lanyard, isn't it? Yeah, I started writing it, and then I, was, I gave up writing it as I was doing it. I was like, no, yeah. no. Long in it. You'd have to have an A3 lanyard like this covering your whole torso. Oh, just a small one. Small, small fan. One. Small fan, yeah. Didn't think it through, sorry. <laughs> hey. Um... The biggest thing yeah, of this chapter on. is the um, the Weasley women being annoyed at Bill and Fleur uh, being together and not enjoying Fleur. Uh, hints of xenophobia at Fleur. And it's like, oh, Mrs Weasley's like, your father and I were meant to be. Bill and Fleur, what's the point of them being together? Fleur is beautiful, right? She's said to be the most beautiful person in the world. Why don't you want that for your son? Yeah, because there's nothing wrong with her, is there? I don't think she's impolite or anything. They don't think, like yeah, her French ways. Maybe they're just ways. intolerant of other cultures. Mm. Yeah. Calling her phlegm um, instead of fleur. And that's not a very good insult. No, it's not. And it's disgusting as well. That's how you welcome s calling someone phlegm. Yeah. Why, 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 how about Weasley's? And I hate to do this. How yeah. about I start insulting you guys if you're going to insult yeah. a poor, mm. innocent French model? Yeah, how about that? Yeah, what if I called, you're at Lucy's what, house. What if I, called, uh, what if I called Ginny? Boring. Yeah. 
And what if I called her uh, Mrs. Weasley, Mrs. Boring? Not nice, is it? No. Yeah, because how would you feel? You're at Lucy's house if they mm. all were calling you Snot Lorinson. It's not nice, I'd, is it? I don't think I'd... I don't think I'd clock. I'd probably be looking at my phone. And I go, eh. And they go, never mind. And I go, eh. and look back to my phone. <laughs> Rude, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not nice. It's just unnecessary. And like Ginny especially seems just like really angry about it. She's in love with her brother. Yeah. But then also, I don't really think that Fleur should be uh, kissing Harry so much in the bed. You're mad if you're thinking that. Am I? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> She's like, mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh, excuse me, you're engaged. Mwah. I love you. Mwah. I love you. Mwah. I love you. Yeah, who are you marrying here, me or him? Mm, him. Him. Well, good. <laughs> well, what are you doing to me? I'm rock hard here. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that's going at Gringotts. I wonder what she actually does at Gringotts. <laughs> Do you think she's going like lamp blaze? Just kissing all, the, kissing all the goblins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come here, grip hook. Mm -hmm. Come here, bum trap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kill grip hook. <laughs> and grip hook. <laughs> yeah. Hang <laughs> him. <laughs> Imagine walking at you like, oh yeah, Goblin Bank, yeah, you're looking through, cashier number one, Goblin, cashier number two, Goblin, cashier number three, French model. Cashier number eight, please. Hello, cashier number eight. Now, um, Yeah, Harry reveals to them finally that um, about the prophecy. Yeah, he tells Ron and Hermione. Um, and I'm glad. I couldn't be asked with another book of secrecy about that. I'm glad he's just opened up, told them about it. Happy days. Mm. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, and then randomly, Hermione gets punched in the face by a joke telescope. I thought, mm, chapter a bit boring, was it? Decided to add that in. Just punching a girl with a prank. So she has a black eye. Oof. 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 I didn't know you were going to do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they get their owl results, don't they? Yeah. They're all worrying about their owl results. Hermione, oh, I'm not going to do that well. Of course you are. You're the cleverest girl in England. Yeah. Yeah, and she's a bit annoyed because she got all O's, outstandings, but then she got one exceeding expectations. But I do, I think if you were a perfectionist, I do understand your disappointments because you, you just nearly got the perfect results. Mm. Well, they probably did, it keep her, probably did it to keep her level, didn't they? Uh, mark Maybe. her down a bit. And Defence Against the Dark Arts as well. That's the one where you're like, no, I want to be on top of that. I want to be able to defend myself in this wizarding war. <sighs> hmm. I love the grading system as well. There are three pass grades and there are three fail grades. Whereas normally there's just like fail and then the rest are like levels of pass. So you've got outstanding, exceeds expectations, acceptable, and then you've got mm -hmm. fail grades, poor, dreadful, and troll. There's no need to insult the trolls. <laughs> you lot are so thick that you're our lowest grade in an exam. Do you like that? Do you know what you are? You are a great big Shrek-looking thing running round in the girls' bathrooms in first year. That's you, that yeah. is. You know what, according to this grading system, you lot are stupider than dreadful. Do you like that? 
Is stupid a word, sir? Uh, more stupid, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're stupider than the Charles. <laughs> Boys are from Jupiter because they are stupid. But that, that, um, that troll in film one looks a lot like Shrek, didn't it? A little jacket on. And it was green. Yeah, I think so. Somebody wants to. Well, Shrek was an ogre, wasn't he? Was he not? He was an ogre. But what's the difference between a troll and an ogre? Same thing, isn't it? Difference between. There's a lot of Googling in this episode. Difference between troll and ogre. I love that mm. I'm not the first person to ask. Oh, oh, this is Shades of Vengeance. I don't want to know that. Shades of Ogres Vengeance. Ogres are big and fat and seem related, related to giants. Ah, a troll would usually have some mildly supernatural flavour like fantastic regeneration or really tough skin. Whereas an ogre will usually just be a stepping stone between a human and a giant. Hmm. Oh. The main difference is the source of the legend. These are all people's opinions. There's no fact. But of course, with thousands of years of myth and legend, words get merged and confused until the definitions are no longer clear. Mm. Mm. Well, pretty high threshold to become an aura. Harry has got, in my opinion, very good uh, results, exam results, but they are not good enough for him to become an aura. And I think um, the threshold's a bit too high. They need auras. Excuse me, don't they? Well, they had to do that with police officers. It used to be you had to be six foot to be a police officer. And then they changed that. And they're like, oh, anyone can be a police officer now. Yeah. You don't have to be tall no more. Yeah. I never thought, do you ever want to be anything like that? A police officer or, I don't know, somebody in authority? No, I don't want anything to do with any of that. No, scary, isn't it? I don't like the idea of chasing people with a baton. I'd chase someone with a gun or a flamethrower. Oh, that'd be good. Hey, I'd, I had a dream that me and you went to someone's house. And um, we went inside and you were like... Uh, and they were like a poor family or something. And you were like, hey, uh, I could value your house for you if you want. <clears> I uh, used to work for an estate agent. And they were like, could you really? You're like, yeah, no cost, no cost, I'll just tell you. And I'm like, all right then. And you looked around and you went to them. 360,000 this is worth. And they couldn't believe it. They're like, oh my God, we're gonna be rich. We can sell this place and move somewhere else and it'll be wonderful. And as me and you were leaving, you're like, it's not worth half that. <laughs> 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 what does that mean? That that's, dream? A, that's a funny little thing to do for people, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little untruth. Yeah, that's all I've got for this uh, chapter. Mm, same here. How many horrible little Weasleys are you giving this chapter out of five? I've got to say, I was bored by this chapter. I thought there was not a lot going on whatsoever. Mm. Well, I'm catching up, what's to say, hello, passwords, this, that, bam, bam, bam. Uh, I'm going to give it one. One horrible Weasley out of five. One. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Myself? Um... It's always nice to see the characters again, isn't it? Um, yeah. I like the introduction of this new code system. Who are you? What's your greatest ambition? What's your pet name, Molly Weasley? Um, you know, family drama. I'm going to give it two horrible Weasleys out of five. Lovely. Any Hedwig's droppings? No, I'm ready for a quiz, though, if you've got one. Uh, then let's see. Oh, he wants the quiz. All right, let's have the quiz. <laughs> um, what kind of soup did Harry have in this chapter? Onion soup. No, it was potato and leek. Was it? Um, 
Arthur's been promoted. What is his new job title? Oh, I knew this was going to come up. Head of the office for the... I don't know. Some, uh, Muggle art, uh, something, I don't know. No. Pass. Wrong. Um, what is Arthur's greatest ambition? To find out how an airplane works. What has been turning people orange? What has been turning people orange? I don't know. Puking pastels. <sighs> Metamorphosis medals. Ah. Um, and finally, what was, um, what's he called? What's P. Green called? Yeah, how is Slughorn? What is Slughorn said to look just like? He is said to look like, I don't know, pig. A walrus. Unfortunately, Oof. Mr. Kirkby, you have lost the quiz. Quiz, 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 crew. It is a harsh beast, the quiz. It is a harsh beast, the quiz. I can't remember the last time I won it. Very attainable answers, though. Yeah, they were, actually. It was doable this week, and I let myself down. Couldn't be bothered! <laughs> bother, I'm on holiday. It's now time for the nation's second favourite segment. It's Hedwig's Drubbings. Eh, not alluding to owl poop, eh, <coughs> not alluding to ploppings. We mean the messages you send in when we allude to Hedwig's droppings. What's in a beak this week? Now we've had a message here on the website. Oh no, a five star review. Oh! From Draco Malfoy. Oh, himself! Now Draco Malfoy says, I love this podcast so much that I spend many hours listening each day. But I have a question. How do Hermione's parents feel about her going away to boarding school? And if they tried to stop her, would they be attacked by Hagrid? Thank you for making my life a little bit better. Well, uh, you're welcome, Draco. What do you reckon, do you reckon uh, Hagrid? Do you reckon they get forced to go to Hogwarts or not? Uh, I because I feel like Harry has. Dumbledore's already made this deal with the parent, with the Dursleys. So I think that's maybe why Hagrid intervenes with them. So I don't, I think if Hermione's parents didn't want her to go, I don't think they could stop her. Or could it's they? hard to say because they were so delighted by her going, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very difficult question, Draco, but thank you for giving it to us. Now we've had a message on the we website. Hope, we hope that answers it for you, Draco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the answer is probably not. So we've had another message on the website from Nathan K. And Nathan K says, found this podcast in the last week while moving house and it's incredible. I'm only just getting onto the Chamber of Secrets and my partner Abby has also gone into it and she's halfway through the Philosopher's Stone. We love it and can't wait to hear more. Mm. The question is, if you had to go on a two-week holiday abroad with anyone from Harry Potter, who would you go with and why? Hmm. Madame Trelawney. Madame Trelawney. Why is that, then? Um, she'd know if you were going to get good weather or not. <laughs> she would. She really would. For me, I'd go with Voldemort. Because Voldemort is going to get respect. Well, enjoy that. Enjoy Albania then. Yeah, well, Forest in Albania. I thought I got. Do I not get to choose where I go? Well, you think you're. He chooses where you go, Voldemort. Oh, no. I've shot myself in the foot here. I didn't want to go to Albania. I wanted to go to like the Seychelles or something. Well, no, you go in Albania because he likes it in that forest. Well, maybe it's maybe it's nice there. Maybe you know. Maybe we can. I don't know. Find a, a lodge. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Nathan K. Okay. We've had another email from Sheila Stevens, and Sheila says, I've just joined Patreon, and I just have to say the Double Vision episodes are so funny. I've been following the main Vision podcast for a couple of years, so now I'm playing catch up with Double Vision. I'm currently listening to the Willy Wonka episode, and I'm crying with laughter. 
You both are doing such an amazing job and really do brighten up my day. Thank you for being so funny and entertaining. Thank you so much, Isn't that Sheila. lovely? That's nice. And what an advert for our patron. Get on it if you're not on it already. There's loads mm. of stuff. And she says, P.S. I have to add another thing to the Pottervision drinking game. Every time Tom does a prolonged moan. That should be on Pottervision bingo. Whoa. Don't do that, do I? Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. All right, now then, we've got a few new patrons. And our first is a baby Harry, and it's Emmy. Emmy! You... Does that make us an Emmy Award winner? You... Emmy? Emmy was the name of the human in Planet of the Apes. Was it? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Emmy, you are a human in Planet of the Apes. <laughs> you are having a fight. It's you and the Monkey King. You have a gun. Lucas is the ape and he is holding one of your friends hostage. <laughs> Get off of her, you say. Get off of her. No, I say get off of her. You s Oh, right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you going to let go of her? On one condition. If you give up the planet of the apes to the apes. No, I've got this gun. All right. Um, put the gun down. <laughs> oh, I didn't you know you were going to do that. <laughs> you shoot the ape. It hits him in the heart. He looks down and there is blood pouring out. Oh. All the other apes look at you and they say, you better leave. That's a bit too much. We didn't know you were going to do that. Yeah. Embarrassed, you walk off with your gun. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Emmy. Thank you so much. Now we've got another baby, Harry, and it's Rich Trigortha. Welcome, Rich. Rich Trigortha? That's what I'm reading. Rich Trigorther, you are a street cleaner in Peckham. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. People call you Trigger for short. Um, yeah. You've had this broom <laughs> for 20 years. In this time, it's your favourite broom. It has had many different handles and many different heads. Some would say it's a different broom. You say you're having a laugh. It is the same broom. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you've got a gang of mates. Uh, one's called uh, Boise. Uh, one's called Denzel. Uh, it's Cheek Marley. There's Cheeky Dell. And um, yeah. there's, of course, Dave. One night, someone kidnaps Del Boy's wife. Uh, they come to you, Trigger. They say, do you know anything about this? You say no. <clears throat> so they don't believe you. So they decide to rough you up. Um, Boise, Lucas, uh, decides yeah. to give you the first interrogation. So I play. <laughs> Go on. What, what have you been doing with Del Boy's wife? <laughs> For gold sight trigger. You're confused. You're confused completely. I never yeah. done anything, but you smile ever so slightly when you reply because you think what preposterous moment to be in. Boise gets a hot poker off the fire and he jabs it into your armpit. Like that. He said, I never done it. I never done it. You look to the side of the room and you see Dave grinning at you. <laughs> Is he the scouser? No, that's Rod Rodney. Oh, Rodney. Uh, hello. <laughs> I don't know what I've, I've never watched Only Fools and Horses. You've never watched Only Fools and Horses? No. 
I used to watch the green, green grass. That's how I know how boisy sounds. Weirdo. Anyway, you say, Dave, <clears throat> why are you letting this happen to me? Why are you letting this happen to me? Dave, why are you letting this happen to me? Why, you must know something for you to be grinning while Boise is torturing me. Dave says, yes. Yes, I do know something. This is because you're always getting my name wrong. This is because you're always getting my name wrong. It's Rodney. I don't understand what you're saying to me, Dave. I don't understand what you're saying to me. I'm Rodney and I'm a plunker. <laughs> Everyone is confused as you are, <laughs> Trig. Yeah. yeah. And as me and Lucas are enacting this story... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> In a moment of exasperation, you break free from the ropes they've tied you up with. You put all of your clothes back on, underpants as well. Yeah, that's right. Boise strip you naked. And you think... <laughs> <laughs> you say, Rodney... No, you say, Dave, you will tell us what you've done with his wife. You yeah. hold this poker up to his um, neck. And he finally says, fine, I'll tell you. Um, she's tied up in the guest room. <laughs> Delboy looks at his own brother and says, this is fucked up. And, and then he says to you, Trig, he goes, do it, Trig. And then he goes, this is for Del, Dave. And he rams the poker through your head and kills you. On your grave, on Rodney's gravestone, he now says, Dave Trotter, not Ant Villain. What a story. <laughs> What a story. We hope you enjoyed that one, Rich. <laughs> you are about to lean against a bar. <laughs> hey, we've got another baby, Harry. How many babies we got? Two. There's another four. How many do you want to do? Oh, we'll have to roll them over to next week. All right, we'll roll them over to next week. So that was Hedwig's Droppings. This has been the Potter Vision Podcast. Thank you all so much for listening. Hey, we've still got tour dates in May. We're going to be in Sheffield, Hull, Manchester, Liverpool and London. Then in July, there's a load of dates as well. Cardiff. Uh, hey, we're going to be in Bristol. That's, that's getting finalised at the minute. Brighton, Swansea, uh, Nottingham. Uh, maybe somewhere else, I can't think. Maybe Guernsey. Who knows? Or the Isle of Mush. Next week... We are on episode 141, chapter 6 of book 6, Draco's Detour. You have been a haunted house dwelling Tom Lawrenson. And you have been the uh, bellboy of Battersea Arts Centre, Lucas Kirkby. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Potter Vision podcast. The music was performed by Jack Evans. If you'd like bonus content and to support the show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash Potter Vision.